this is uh, this is the tenth year mm-hmm. of the Con Carolina Short Film Festival. Um, I came into it. 2015. <laughs> I'll tell you how I got into it. And let this be a lesson to everyone. Jason Buterin, filmmaker Jason Buterin, whose Kill Giggles uh, will be premiering shortly, and we're all looking forward to that, came to me with this cock and bull story about how he, you know, oh, he'd been running the film track and it was really great, but he felt it was time to pass it on to New Blood and it'd be a great honor if I took it. And like a fool, a fool, I believed him. And um, yeah. So uh, I'm hoping that next year uh, someone else will be taking over that role because it's it's a great opportunity and uh, it's a real honor for them to take it off my hands. <laughs> Uh, I am Jason Gilbert. I am an author. I also run the Con Carolina Short Film Festival along with Bill. And uh, I'm I'm here today because you have questions about what we did and how we did it. Um, <laughs> yeah, dur- during the age of Corona apocalypse. <laughs> and um, I also review movies. I have a YouTube channel called Fail Flicks. Two shows on there. One's Fail Flicks, where it's just me. And then another one's called Beer in a Movie, where it's me, Wes, and whoever's unlucky enough to be invited on that, you know, at that particular episode. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Bill Mulligan. I'm a high school teacher, indie filmmaker in Sanford, North Carolina. And uh, let's see, what else do I do? I, I do. I'm on the Decades of Horror podcast, talking about horror movies from the '70s and '80s. And I'm going to be starting a new podcast, a video podcast with actress Emily Vassilos coming up i just had to find someone who is good enough looking to make up for them looking at me and i'm here because i am starved for human um conversation because my wife is uh visiting family and i am left with eight cats and i am going well and truly stir crazy it's yeah. a lot of work it's a lot of work doing these things now jason and i are, are, are we're, we plan to still be doing the film festival and that's really a job in and of itself yeah, it was right. I, I did it by myself for i think a year and it was way too much to do two things and it was frankly a lot just to do that so jason coming on board was an absolute lifesaver and um the two of us together i think it 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 manages to be doable now of course jason foolishly decided to become program manager which is too big a job for five people on top of everything else so yeah a lot of grays in the and that beard now (laughs) <laughs> well, and then there was a lot of things that we did to the film track as well. Um, when we started revamping, Con Carolina's, uh, when I came on, needed to be overhauled. It was time to fall back and regroup and take a look at how things were being done programming-wise. What, what could we do to grow the con and up the ante? So Bill got a phone call one day, and the phone call was, what do you want the film track to be? Do you want it to be Phantom 2.0, where we talk about how much we love movies, or do you want it to make it a film-making track, you know, so where people can come and learn the behind-the-scenes stuff from the people who do it, you know, from behind the scenes? And some of these guys have been doing it for a living. So Bill and I work on the format for that. And then, of course, one of those changes became the Short Film Festival, not so much the format of how we do it, but how far we were willing to go with it, um, how much we wanted it to grow. Mm. So this is the first year that we uh, gave a cash prize. This is the first year that last year was the first year that we actually started doing certificates for all the winners and dedicated awards uh, plaques for the, for the four top. And um, this year, is going to be the first year that it's actually hosted off-site. Mm. So we're working on, since with the pandemic, we can't, you know, we couldn't have the physical con. We're working on presenting the short film festival as a drive-in. Right. And, uh, yeah. Dates and location to come. Right. Awesome. And, and con Carolina has always had a pretty good reputation with its film festival. Mm-hmm. Film festivals, and we can get into this if you want, film festivals vary from, just out and out scams yeah to to ones that are completely dedicated to short films yeah and and we're somewhere in the middle 
closer to the legit one than the scam one. The scam ones, literally, there is no festival. You send an entry fee and your film, and two guys cash the check and send you laurels. Yeah. And you're just gathering laurels. It's it's basically an exchange. And then there's there's somewhere that it, this is the whole reason people come just to watch the short films on a big giant screen and, and all. And and conventions often the film festival is kind of an afterthought, just a way to raise a yeah. little bit of money and something to do. But Con Carolines has always been good, and I I won a few awards with films there. I still have those awards. They they sit right next to my bed. Sad, really. And um, you know, it's it was it was real pleasure because the, the people there the films that you're competing against are just getting better and better and better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's always, it's always been a good, a good festival. And we try to make it better each year. The, the cash yeah. thing this year was very nice. Yeah. Um, appreciated and used well. I it, think when I first came on with the con Carolina short film festival, it really wasn't a whole lot different from, you know, many other short film festivals in that it is, Part of the con, another way for the con to have a little bit of extra income. And slowly but surely, or actually not really even slowly, got in the past no. years, we've we've really kind of grown this thing. Um, we've we've actually got a lot of other film festivals watching us, saying, like, what are you doing? What you know, and looking at the different the ways we do different things. I'm to understand for a lot of filmmakers, we're the only film festival that actually calls out the official selections mm -hmm. as well as the awards. We are, we I recognize know. everybody who got in. Uh, it, but yeah, it's going to be a couple of hard asses. So even getting <laughs> selected, a lot of people say that's it, no it is an honor. It's <laughs> it, a lot of times it's little things like uh, and and I'm glad to see that this got recognized. But like when I'm describing a film, I try very hard to not just credit the name of the film and the director, but also the writer. Now, this is because I think of myself primarily as a screenwriter. So it does stick in my craw a little bit when they talk about how great a film is. They, they thank the director for every single thing, including the lines of dialogue that I'm pretty damn sure that person was not responsible for. So I, I like to mention now, most of them are writer directors. I think most people become directors because they want to see their script made into a film. Uh, but I think that's that's important. I I liked um, I started doing posters to tell when the films would be shown because nothing drives me crazier than to go to a convention and I know there's a short film by a friend of mine that I want to see, but it's in some four hour block of time. I'm probably not going to sit there for four hours waiting for this film to show up. It's a convention. There's a lot of stuff going on, so we did as best we could to block out the schedule and let people know roughly when within a 10 minute margin of error when their film would be shown so they could go see it and see it in front of an audience, which filmmakers love to have their film seen by an audience and, and oh, yeah. the reaction. See, do people laugh? Do people scream? Do people applaud? You know, do they throw things at the screen? Now, all these are legit reactions. And, and you, you want to film, We encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> How have the submissions grown over the years? Talk about well, the first time you, you did this to now, uh, the difference in submissions. I, I'd have to, do you, do you know the numbers off the top of your head? We so, had 91 this year. We had 91 this year, which is the most we've ever had. Um, at our low point, um, there were some things going on behind the scenes at the convention, unfortunately. And I feel like it did affect our submissions. We, uh, I think at our low point, we only got like 50. Yeah, I think that's um, about right. 46 or 50, somewhere, somewhere yeah. in that range. And last year, we hit... 60 or 70? 60 or 70. I think that's about like right. That. And then and, this and, year we hit 91. And then the 2021 festival submissions open tomorrow. So and so I, I do I do more. expect we 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 may not see an uptick next year <laughs> simply because many filmmakers we've lost a quarter of the year has just been taken from us. Yeah. Filmmaking is is a collaborative effort. Unless you're an animator, you can't be just sitting in your basement doing it alone. And yeah. that just hasn't been permissible and, and probably not wise. Maybe still isn't. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. But there just may not be as many films available. So let, we'll have to wait and see. Because one of the other things that goes with it is, yeah, we had 91 submissions. But we also, at least half of those, and I think more actually, 
would have easily slipped in any other year. Uh, yeah. e easily, I'd say, I'd say sixty. There, there actually were were very, very few that were just like no, no, no. This just no. There, e even the ones that did not score. You know, let's say if it were ten being the highest and one being the lowest. Most of the ones that didn't get in were sevens, which mm -hmm. is not a bad score. Maybe there was one thing missing, or maybe they were just fine, but there was just so many nines and eights this year. Yeah. The quality has exploded. The technology has gotten so affordable that and, people are yeah. no longer limited. And honestly, too, I mean, we ended up – so every year, Con Carolinas gets four hours for the film festival. It starts at 11 and goes until like 2 and 2 or 3 in the afternoon – this year we had so many films not only submitted but that we got in we ended up increasing the time to seven hours and that's with us doing the international showcase and, and all that good stuff and if we can keep if we can keep at this momentum it's a likelihood that the film festival is going to outgrow the con Mm -hmm. And if it gets to that point, then that's when we would have to start looking at making it while still part of the convention and name its own event. Would that at that point, would you change it from short film to feature film? Would you? And we would have to. Film? Yeah, we would have to. And then honestly, we would have to start. We would be doing not only the con and ourselves, but the filmmakers a disservice to not start really heavily researching, getting uh, the status of Academy qualifier. Yeah. And if we did that, like I said earlier, there's a chance that, you know, we would either have to turn the film festival over to somebody else and, um, start our own or, you know, just pull away from the con Carolinas entirely and, you know, rename it something else. And it would have to be a multiple day event. It can't be yeah. see a Saturday. It would have to start, Thursday or Friday and you know yeah. wrap up Sunday evening. Now can can Academy eligible festivals be limited in the genres they they're interested in? Yes. Okay. Um that's but just like just like what we are doing, it's a double edged sword because you're going to eventually get that one film come in and under it's like what we dealt with this year, under what we have. Right. There's nothing we can do with this movie, and it's too gorgeous to pass up. Yeah, uh, we had two films come in that we don't have a drama category. If I mean, if you want to be dramatic, that's cool. And then he turns into a werewolf and kills everybody. Right, and you're okay. <laughs> um, we had two films come in that we just finally said we need to go ahead and do a drama category. Um, one of them won best international beyond home and then the other one malign won uh best drama mm -hmm. curious what you guys learned from this year especially because of the interesting way in which you had to do this festival that maybe you're going to apply or that it's going to help you run next year's festival uh twitch <laughs> i mean honestly that was so the first year we did the award ceremony was last year. Uh, yeah. We did it in the hotel restaurant and was had it like YouTube Live or something or Google Live. What did we use? Something no, we used Facebook Live. Facebook. Um, okay. This year we streamed it through Twitch. Um, and it also was showing on Facebook via Twitch. We were able to interact with the filmmakers, chat. We got all see their comments, which is awesome. Yeah, almost every filmmaker who submitted to us got to watch the festival, and uh, and it was recorded. Um, I've uh, I've actually just got it into the Google Drive today, so I can start editing on it, and get it posted up. Oh, cool! So that's I mean, moving forward, yeah. You know, once we're back in person, of course we'll you know do it live again, but. Twitch, get it, get and not don't just say, Oh, I'm gonna stream it live. Let me create my own Twitch channel. Partner with we're gonna probably partner with Continual again because they've got a good following. And I also talked to earlier about the film track, and and what's what was interesting to me thinking about it as you were talking 
was the idea of, of how to balance it. And you really have to balance it, you know, the filmmaking aspect, because not every, I mean, there's a lot of people who want to make films, but they're not going to go to an advanced, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, how to, how to, aperture, how to get the right aperture kind of, right. You know, they're not going to go to that panel. They're going to go to the panel that says, how do I make a million dollars making a movie? But, <laughs> but, I'll that one. but then the audience side of it too, they'll, they'll definitely go to fandom panels. So, yeah. So, and you want, and obviously it's a con, you want to bring in an audience. Sure. You want the people to flock to you because there's this, six, other, six other fucking panels going on at the same time. This is you, the great challenge in, in yeah. doing the programming track, which is why I'll be so happy for someone else to take over. It's, it's, yeah. it's very difficult, and we realize most people are not there to learn how to do something. They're there to just have fun. And a Marvel versus DC panel sounds a whole lot more exciting than how to you know good cinematography yeah. unless you are really planning to make a film and that is a problem i think in some ways these this virtual con may work out better for us and that uh, a panel that people may not have been jumping to go see when there was something else live happening at the convention will go back and view this panel subsequently yeah. And it's it's out there and can be a resource. Also, having it recorded means that any good information you're getting, you're not furiously writing it down, getting carpal tunnel syndrome with your notes. You can just rewind it and watch it again. So I, I think in many ways we were able to do we – had, we had a great lineup set up. I mean, th what, what was eventually turned into our uh, virtual track was just a fraction of what we had. Yeah, we We picked the ones that we thought would work well in this – which means a lot of ones that had maybe more audience participation had to fall by the wayside because I had very little faith in the live ones being able to go off without a hitch. Um, it's, yeah, that, we it's only had one that had a hiccup. Yeah. Only one or two. But it was still difficult to get everyone to know exactly when and where to go. You know, there, there are challenges to doing this, no, no question. But I, I've had people go to some of our panels and uh, I'm talking to them afterwards and they, they say how much they liked it. And like, so what films have you made? It's like, oh, I don't make movies. I just, they've, they've figured out by this point that some of the people that are up there on the panel are just entertaining. Yeah. That you are not going to be bored if you've got, uh, you know, Michelle and Antoine, Tom Gore, Christopher Moore, Jason Buterin. You can listen to him just describe the phone book and it's entertaining. I mean, these people are showmen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they and there's and we we have you know a good amount of diversity. I mean, England Simpson is is an amazing creator who is so totally different from her films. It's almost laughable. Oh, God. Um, so she when you meet her see in person, her, she's her. a cupcake. You see her films, it's like she's going to kill kill me in my sleep. Okay, but that's sure. And that's, that's part of what makes it fascinating is that you know you get something from her films, and then you get something entirely different from her. So, I mean, really, I, I think the filmmakers in general, and, and Jason can talk about writers, too. It's, it's a crapshoot. Just because someone writes the greatest book ever, witty dialogue, just snappy stuff, and then you put them up there and they start talking, and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> you're falling asleep listening to them. And then other people may just be mm -mm -mm on the writing, but, boy, they, they know how to control an audience. It, just yeah. because you're competent in something doesn't mean you're a good panelist. But we've been working with all these filmmakers for so long. At this point, we've got a pretty good crew of, of panelists that we can depend on. They're good filmmakers, but more importantly for the con, they're really good on panels. And the cool thing with them, too, and a lot of them came to both of us later and thanked us when we changed over the format of the film track, was they're open to being challenged. It's like, okay, cool, you love movies, now talk about what you do behind the camera. And when Bill was setting that up, and he was picking brains about it and, you know, mostly me because I'm so connected to the writing track. One of the things I said was, you know, don't, don't do a panel that's going to, that's going to be something someone's going to pay $5,000 for a full semester's tuition to mm -hmm. keep it simple. Okay. Um, how do I, how do I not be an asshole on set, <laughs> you know, or, what are the what are the catastrophes we've had go wrong and how did we move past that's it? Yeah, that, that, that yeah. kind of stuff. It's just one and, time on film set. I mean, just right. my stories I, alone. I mean, I've done some incredibly stupid turns, things. Yeah, that almost turns into an AA meeting at some point. It, yeah. it does. It does. And, and the other thing is, we've got a wide variety. We have Richard Claybaugh, who is a professional. Yeah. I mean, he's made movies with Christopher Walken. 
Okay. Wow. I mean, you know, and, and it continues to do so that the new one that came out, he was involved with Becky, uh, yeah. which is, yeah. So, uh, you know, still doing so. And we have folks like Alan Watkins who just will call me up on a Thursday and say, Hey, I'm free Saturday. Let's make a movie. And like, you got any ideas? Like, well, let's go to the shiny diner and discuss it. We, literally, we come up with these little one minute movies that we just do for fun because it's a good way to spend a Saturday. I mean, that's, it's all the, you know, just a wide variety. And then people in the middle, there's people who like myself who are doing this because this is our creative outlet. I don't intend to make a career of this. I think that that ship has sailed. And there are people who I fully expect will make a career of this. Yeah. Well, and two, the, the filmmakers being around have lended a lot to the fandom tracks, mm -hmm. uh, especially at Con Carolinas, because just, just to be real, no one really gives a fuck about Marvel versus DC anymore. Those panels stay so empty. No one cares about, oh, well, you know, when I was a kid, I really liked Star Wars, but today I'm going to talk about the new movies and why I hate them or the old movies and why I love to hate them because yeah. I'm a fan. No one cares. They want interaction and they want informational. What does a film? What What are you looking for next year? What 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 is it something that a filmmaker can can aspire to? You know, if they want to get out there this weekend and make the film to submit to you guys, what are you hoping for next year that you haven't seen already, or that or that you like a lot already that you know it's gonna it's gonna make the film festival? I I can give you one good hint. If you're going to make a Star Wars fan film, that's fine. We have a best fan film category. Mm -hmm. Make your Star Wars fan film. You really don't want to put Duel of the Fates in there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. And anyone who has a baseline knowledge of Adobe Premiere or iMovie can do a lightsaber. Yeah, so, we're not impressed. Yeah, th th think about something else. <laughs> Don't yes, it's and it's I mean it's the same lessons Hollywood could learn. Good yeah. special effects no longer are enough to impress someone. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's I, just too easy to do. And okay. and you need a story. Story, story, story. If I did one if I had to just beat one thing down. Now, there are exceptions to everything. And and the winner, the number one our our, our, our number one film this year is not a typical one that I would be attracted to. In terms of like a definite story, characters, dialogue, and all, this was a very different kind of film. My favorite film of all time is Suspiria, which violates every rule of storytelling that I hold dear to my heart. Exceptions exist, but as a whole, the three act story structure is a good one. There's a reason why it's lasted as long as it has. Um, avoid just dig up a few articles on on cliches to avoid the uh, because we are watching a lot of films I, I would say also the slow burn is a good thing if you could pull it off but keep in mind you are doing this to people who have been watching a lot of short films probably when they have the time i'm going to watch seven of them now and if your film is a slow burn there's a real good chance it might not make it to the good part that yeah. people are just watching this fuse burn, 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 and like, okay, fast yeah. forward there. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that to a film, but human nature. So sometimes having a strong opening and a strong ending and strong stuff in the middle, is that too much to ask? You got to understand oh, that. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you got to understand that. I mean, some of these film festivals where they're getting in five, six, seven, eight hundred submissions, when they hit the play button, they're looking for a reason to turn your movie off mm. because they've got to get to the next one. The publishing industry is the same way. When you when you send in your uh, first thousand words or your first three chapters, whatever the publisher asked you for, that uh, the person mm. who read that is looking for a reason to stop. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. We're fortunate in that we're, you know, we're almost to 100 subs in a year. So we can stick with your film. But at the same time, don't make it drag. And if you're going to do a slow burn, if you have to think for a minute, OK, is this building what I want to build or is this kind of dragging? If you have to ask, ask yourself that, 
you need to take another look at your cut. Yeah. I've spoken to a lot of film festival programmers, and one of the things that always strikes me is, is a very similar principle to publishing in that it's not always that your thing is bad. It's just not the fit for the festival or the blocks that you've created. And you've, you've, you've come up with, you come up with excellent blockage. You want to have a theme that runs through those. And sometimes that film just doesn't, you either have a film that's very similar to that or a film that is, you know, a little bit longer and takes up a little bit more time. So you have to kick out that uh, other longer film. I mean, those are all factors, right. In determining, sure. it's not necessarily always, you know, because your film was bad. It's, it, and I think a lot of filmmakers might take it that way, and it's no. never really that at and, all. And we had this. We had this issue with another film festival, the Geek Gala, mm -hmm. which is very much a kind of family-oriented festival. And we had a film from a very talented uh, filmmaker and a personal friend that was terrific, but it was very adult, um, very graphic, both uh, violently and sexually. It just wasn't a good fit for the convention. And maybe we should have made that more clear in the description. Things like that will happen. Or like you said, there, your film may be perfectly good, but there may be another film that does virtually the same thing and is just a 9, a 10. Eh, that, or, that's it, or, or it might be shorter and you needed a shorter film as opposed to a longer film in that, in that specific. Well, I, here's, here's the best piece of advice I will give to any filmmaker out there. Make your film the best it can be at the shortest duration it can be. Yes. Don't don't cut it, don't cut a great ten minute film down to a mediocre five minute film. But if you can make a great five minute film, you will be you'll more way more likely to get in than if it's a great fifteen minute film. And if you make a if it, if there's a thirty whatever the time limit is, if you are trying so hard to just get right under that time limit. Okay, get under the time limit because if it's over, it's over. That's it. that's the easiest decision to make. It's like, oh, great film. It's thirty-two minutes long. Our cutoff is thirty. Bye. <laughs> we can't make exceptions, and we're not very likely to. Um, but man, you had better be firing on every cylinder there is. If you get it at a thirty-minute mark, it had better be so good because your thirty-minute film means that six five-minute films don't get in. Yeah, there are six filmmakers that we could make happy, or there's you. <laughs> so your film had better be better than all six of those films put together yeah. because that's that's the cost to us of putting in a long film brevity is the soul of wit mm. yeah <laughs> I, and we we had that one bill you remember that one body horror one we had last year and i can't remember the name of it but it was the couple that got locked in the room and oh, we're being yeah. to eat yeah. non-stop and i mean like the effects were crazy awesome the film looked amazing the cinematography the sound i mean it fired on every cylinder cylinders and it was straight up like body horror that would make God, it grows it grows me out <laughs> and and so maybe not would, the best film for a festival that involves a lot of food trucks yeah <laughs> but it, it was one of those like this just doesn't fit um mm -hmm. because it would have been the only one of its kind now a straight up horror festival like mad monster party or something oh absolutely sure they could, they really could probably well have it. a block of you know after dark block of, of right. strictly ad adult oriented films yeah um yeah if you're going to be transgressive i mean part of being transgressive is you get a lot of rejection yeah. and you, you, you're probably not very transgressive if you don't so that that is something to keep in mind read the description of of the thing carefully even if it says, you know, it may say horror, but it might be um, Lovecraftian horror. Best short films, you know which one, Jason, I've ever seen was, was a, a slasher film that, had, that just was so funny and so creative and everything. It was, it was absolutely terrific. But it would not be accepted by a Lovecraftian horror film as, as much as I'm sure they would also have enjoyed every moment of it. It, you know, so you have to know know your audience. Don't waste the entry fee. I mean, I'll gladly cash the check, but actually, I feel a little bad doing so. I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>